You know, a lot of times uh, when you go to the doctor and they do all these tests, especially blood tests, things don't show up. And so that would mean that those symptoms could be subclinical or below, they're very sensitive. They might be not showing up on conventional tests yet because they're early uh, symptoms of a, of a condition that takes years to develop. So there is a test that I do in my clinic um, that's very, very sensitive and it picks up uh, the beginning stages of different situations, okay? But in order to explain that, I have to explain what it's measuring. And there's a system in the body called the autonomic nervous system, A-N-S. If you've ever taken anatomy physiology, you've heard about the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic meaning kind of the involuntary automatic uh, system that works on autopilot. You don't have to even think about breathing or your heart rate because it just automatically goes. So this system is the system behind all other systems. It's behind the endocrine system. It's behind the organ system. And it's kind of like a, a part of the nervous system that regulates um, on and off functions or hyper or hypo. So if you had a little light switch and you had a little rheostat or a little dial that to turn up the light and down, that would be what this system controls is the turning up and the turning down of different organ and gland functions, okay? So there's two divisions. One is called the sympathetic, uh, and that would be, another name for that would be the flight or fight mechanism, and that is the stress state. It's your body's ability to react to stress. If there's a lion there, you can either run away or fight the lion. Uh, if a car is on your child, you would try to lift the car over the child and, and get this incredible adrenaline rush. So the sympathetic nervous system kind of runs on adrenaline and other hormones that activate or turn things on. So if you can imagine in a certain stress state, all the different body reactions that occur, that would be controlled by that part right here. Okay, so that's like the on switch. Now, we also have the off switch, uh, which is called the parasympathetic, and that has to do with more rest, sleep, and digestion. So you can't digest you're being chased by a tiger. You can't reproduce if you're being chased by a tiger. So when, body, when these bodies are in stress states, they have reproductive problems, they have hormone problems, they have digestive problems, and they can't sleep. So this we consider the system that helps relax you and calm you down. And so these things are constantly going back and forth. So if you can imagine in a total relaxed state, all the different body functions, that's when you're healing. That's when, your, um, that's when your metabolism is working. So this system measures all those functions, okay? So we go back and forth. So this would be more like the reaction to stress. This is more the ability to recover from stress. Now, what's really cool is there's a test to measure both of these systems. And it's a technology developed by the Russians in 1990 called the heart rate variability. And there's over 2,000 studies and even certain cardiologists use this as a predictor for mortality from cardiovascular incidents. I don't use that for that purpose. I used it mainly to measure stress in the body. So the heart rate variability uh, technology will measure information between the heartbeats to assess the nervous system that's controlling the different functions of the heart. And from there, we can kind of get an idea of what's going through the entire body, okay? So that's what this test is. And, and I want to just explain the two scenarios. Um, we can actually visualize what's going on with stress in the body. We can actually see stress in your body and see how it's affecting your body and see how you're reacting to it. In a normal body, <clears throat> this graph, this line should be totally plumb up and down. Like there's no tigers in the room, the, there's, you know, the walls are safe, everything's calm and everything should be chilled out. But when you measure someone, a lot of times it's stuck in high mode, yet their, their body's reacting to stress, but there's no stress there. So they're basically kind of stuck in something. In that state, you might find them thinking a lot, analyzing, they can't turn it off, they can't relax. So that would be that state. They're kind of stuck in stress, even when they're sleeping. And then we get a, um, a loss of that. <clears throat> Over time, when you're stuck in stress, when you're burning out, you end up burnt out, and then this tall dial goes to the left, and that would describe someone who kind of lost their vitality, their get-up-and-go mojo, their, um, 
and they, be, they feel like they're lazy. They feel like they're tired. They just can't seem to get going. And um, so that's what happens when this goes down here because now their body doesn't react to stress anymore. Another physiological thing would be if they were to exercise and the pulse rate doesn't go very high. So this does control the pulse rate, okay? Now over here, the parasympathetic, it's measured by a smaller dial <coughs> right there. So we measure that too. And normally that needs to be all the way to the right, okay? Because you should always have a little bit more of this than this because you, it's like your buffer reserve to stress. So if you're being chased by a tiger, you need, you need to be able to have enough reserve to get away and then recover from that. So it's really the, uh, like once you are done being chased by the tiger, how fast does your body come back and recover? How fast can you recover from stress? How fast can you recover from exercise? And <clears throat> if this brings the pulse rate up when you're exercising, this will bring it down after you stop exercising, okay? If you work out and your, your pulse rate stays high for a long period of time, then you, you don't have a good system that can recover that. That's a very unhealthy state. So this is another system that measures um, kind of like your ability to recover from stress. And this is an active recovery. So your body is constantly working to recover from stress. So if there's a problem with this, if this dial goes right here, and the more it goes to the left, your tolerance for stress is affected, people get on your nerves easily, you have no patience, you don't sleep, you don't relax, and it can severely affect your metabolism, okay? So those are the different um, mechanisms, and there is a test to measure these, and it's very valuable, especially in determining what exercise the person needs, kind of where they're at uh, on the body, and then there's also techniques that I do to extract the old stress from the body using acupressure to make a difference. So I've been doing this for like 25 years, so I'm able to manipulate the changes in this graph by doing before and afters. So I hope this was helpful. And um, it's called the autonomic nervous system, and then it's called heart rate variability.